Ya yeah, go. Ni makala mengine ya uhalisia mpenzi mtazamaji na kama unavyojua ni kwamba makala haya huwa ni makala ambayo yanakujenga kwa njia kubwa zaidi. Tumekutana na watu wameelezea vile ambavyo Mungu aliweza kuwanusuru katika hali ambazo wengine walipokuwa wameziangalia walikuwa wamesema ya kwamba hapa mambo kuisha. If you are a Kenyan, you know what that statement means. Wakati ambapo unasikia mtu anasema hapa sasa sioni matumaini lakini Kwa hali ambao wanamtumainia huyu Mungu. Let me tell you. Hata mwanadamu akikuangalia na aseme nini na Mungu hajamalizana na wewe, hakuna mahali ambapo utaenda. Maybe you are asking yourself, "He, na kamiti leo umeamua kuanza aje by the way, kamiti is my name." Sasa, unajua mwaka uliopita ndo mwaka ambao ulikuwa na mambo. Tulikuwa tumetoka katika mwaka 2020 wakati ambapo COVID ilikuja katika taifa hili na ikahangaisha watu wengine wakapoteza kazi wengine nini ndoa zikavunjika yani kulikuwa na mambo mengi tu yalikuwa yanafanyika and of course kuna wale ambao waliweza kupoteza na wapendwa wao na kuna wengine ambao maisha yao yalibadilika you know na yakabadilika akachukua mwelekeo mwingine lakini kuna wengine ambao katika covid hiyo wamemuona Mungu kwa njia ya kipekee na niko na watumishi wa Mungu pastor Boniface Nagi na pastor Joyce Wangeshi ambaye ni mkewe ambao wanahudumu katika kanisa la Nairobi Chapel Utawala let me tell you Mungu huzungumza he kabisa bwana asifiwe sana asifiwe mwokozi you know i'm you know nafurahi kuwa hapa because every time tumekuwa mahali kufanya makala haya uhalisia wakati mwingine unapata na shuhuda zingine Unapata mpaka wakati ambapo una rekodi hayo makala huo ushuhuda unaninenea saa hiyo. Amina. Otherwise mko wazima. Kabisa, wazima. kabisa. Mwenyezi Mungu amewalinda amewahifadhi. Hallelujah kabisa. God speaks. I tell you. And he spoke to you. Yes my brother he did. We serve a speaking God and we serve a father. And it is actually true. Especially if you are a friend of God. God is always alive and he wants to talk to you and if you there is no way you are walking with a friend and he doesn't tell you what is ana kuficha ficha mambo amna hawezi mm-hmm. kwa maana he is your friend hata yes. mimi mwenyewe tukitembea na wewe baba kuna mambo utaanza kuniambia hey. yes that is true kwa sababu ndakufichulia ile siri mm. umeona kwa sababu pia biblia inasema the secrets of the lord are with them that fear him uh-huh. yes. you get mm. it uh-huh. so if you walk with god he will always reveal to you so Okay, hebu tuanze hapo. God yeah. spoke to you na akakwambia kwamba a storm mm-hmm. was coming. Sasa mimi niko kwa nyumba. Were you praying? Were you? Amna, hata I was not praying by the way. I was just seated in the house. In fact, I was running around just being a mother. Uh-huh. And running around because I have a small baby. Yeah. And so I decided to sit in the sitting room. I was just uh, feeding the child. So as I'm planning to feed the child, there is a song that is playing on telly. Just one of these YouTube songs that you're listening and worshiping. Mhm. As I'm listening to this song, um, one of the before the song plays, someone is giving a testimony of some some child mm-hmm. and this child had uh, fallen sick in their church and how the church came together and prayed and as the church was praying together then that song was birthed. Now the song that was being sung. Ah, uh-huh. So as I'm listening to the song, I'm captured by the song and I start worshiping. Then I see myself like in a vision. I see my in it begins split of seconds i see myself giving a testimony of someone coming out of icu and then i tell myself ah, maybe i have i have really you know like i've, I've been so engrossed in the testimony of the person i'm listening mm. that i'm imagining you mm. know that can also yeah, happen yeah yeah so i'm telling myself ah not really and then i even leave the the room and i continue with my work the following day i sit the song again i hear the song again it's like Every single time I'm in that space the song sings again. Mm-hmm. Then now I sit down I'm like okay this is happening pretty much too many times. Inatoka wapi? So mm-hmm. nikikaa hivi chini nikasikia Mungu ameniambia mm-hmm. kwamba there is a storm coming. I said storm. Then ajiambia ndio ni covid the church had issues because mm-hmm. eh, there is no church that wasn't affected <coughs> by covid. Yeah. So in my head me I'm thinking it's the church and maybe things that will happen because even especially even at that time I think we hadn't been in church physically True. for almost a year uh-huh. but we were just doing our services online. So I'm thinking maybe it's uh, something around that. So as usual because I normally get into prayer, I started getting into prayer. But you know when God puts a burden in you, if you want to know that you're praying for the right thing, the burden becomes lighter. So I start praying for the church, the burden is not lifting. Iko tu pale pale. Iko pale pale hata ibanduki. Jamani. Ai. 
nikamaliza nikaona you know as pastors the first time tunaingia church eh? i prayed for the church ai nikaingia nation ai ai <laughs> sasa nikaenda kwetu sasa Ah, nikaanza yeah. my sisters watoto wa sisters zangu nikaenda nikaenda ai mzigo yendi iko pale iko pale. pale kabisa in fact it's getting heavier wana shindua ai kwani leo nime miss aje you know how you pray you're thinking and you have prayed a miss mm -hmm. kwa sababu bado hiyo burden ijakuwa lifted mm -hmm. so then i decided let me now start praying for him na by then unashia na yeye what you're going through by the way, uh -huh. I'm not hearing. Ninaomba tu by the way. Yes. And then pre, pr prior to that, all of us had gotten a cold. Sio tu tulikuwa tumepata homa homa hivi. Yeah. Kila mtu alikuwa anatibiwa, hata yeye alikuwa anatibiwa mm -hmm. homa homa. Mhm. Mm sasa sasa kuna nataka kumsumbua sana because nilikuwa naona mafua yanamsumbua sana. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. So I decided ah. So hii siku ya mwisho, ai lakini niko na ndugu analemewa lemewa. Ai, hayuko venye anakuanga very active. So nikasemaje acha ni muite. So nikamuita ametumeka sitting room naye watoto wamelala kwa sababu ilikuwa siku za shule tu mm -hmm. na mapema. Mm -hmm. Nikasema nikaanza kumuombea. Wakati nilimguza as niliguza sasa kwa spirit naanza kumuombea. Ah, nika realize. Yeah, how come I'm feeling you know like this an excitement in the spirit like finally I've gotten the the, wow. the thing. Ile nilikuwa naombea niko wa hii wiki mzima imeisha nikitafuta ni wapi? So finally as I'm praying for him Normally he normally joins me. Mm -hmm. If I call him we are praying about something he will always join me. But this time he was very lethargic. So he's like he's not joining me. In fact he even fell asleep. But I continued praying. I went and I laid hands on him. We prayed two days continuously we prayed like that. Sasa hiyo sasa kuna conviction kabisa. Sasa ninajua ni yeye ni nafale ni yeye. But bado sijashikanisha story na storm ni yeye. Aha. Uh -huh. Najua e burden you see, I'm not, I'm not connecting the burden and what God said about the storm. I know God said there's a storm coming. Lakini. And then there's a heavy burden that I have that is not lifting. But it has started lifting as I'm praying for him. Yes. So as I continue to pray for him, then at night at about three, he wakes up, he's coughing, coughing, and it's not stopping. And I'm wondering, I, so I also wake up. So he goes to the uh, to the bathroom and uh, I followed him there and then when he's spitting I notice blood where So now that scared me where because I was like I the little that I know about medicine and stuff Papa. I knew this one is not a good sign is not a good sign So new siku new siku 3 a.m. This is like 3 a.m. Lakini unajipeleka tu vizuri tu bado Yes, uko, uko. he's walking but he's panting a lot. Uh -huh. He's struggling to breathe, you can tell. Yes, yes, he's just panting and uh -huh. he's he's just not himself and the coughing is very continuous, eh? So we sat down and when we sat down on our bed, I knew this is the storm. It's like everything now connected in the spirit. And I knew he's the storm. So when you saw the blood, yes, Kajua, this is the storm that the Lord is talking to me about. Now, of course, I was scared. The natural me, I was scared because anytime you see blood, it means something. Are not okay. yeah, um, vitu vitu so I was like, now, Father, what do I do? So naturally, I just went into prayer, put, laid my hands on him because okay. now he can't even pray. Yeah. So nika ingia maombi. Took I think I prayed for an hour or something I mm, think. About an hour. Yeah. Uliko yeah. me sense that something was coming. Uliko me feel like ah, you're not okay. Kidogo. Ama uliko na titi ni homa ya kawaida. Homa ya kawaida eh napata matibabu. Uh, lakini sikufikiri ati kwamba ningekuwa kuna matatizo zaidi au ugonjwa zaidi ya homa. Kwa maana nilijua itakuwa ni siku mbili tatu baada kule kuugua nitakuwa sawa. When you saw blood? Ah hata nilipoona damu si haiku uh, it didn't come or come to my mind that there could be something wrong. If kiri labda, kuna vile tu maybe ile sore throat, ndio mana ime, yo damu metoka. Managi kuwati hata damu nyingi. Kiasi, kiasi tu kwenye kiko hozi. Yeah. Bas, nika maliza pale alafu, ndio alpo nyombea mi nika lala. Kisasa matatizo ya kanza usiku. Kisasa tare kumi. Mana kisasa nika kuwa na, na, na shindikana kulala, joto kwa mwili, na ino na, na toka jasho, mbala nasikia baridi. Asa ile fever, ile infection imeanza kuwa, imekuwa zaidi ya kawaida. Uh -huh. Alafu nikaanza kupata shida ya kupumua. Ilikuwa usikuwa, hata usikuwa kwa mkia tarekumi na, na moja jumatano, kulikuwa na, na mvua ilinyesha usiku. 
Kwa hiyo nikasikia kama sasa mke wangu akwapa sijui nifungue eh, curtain nizivute nifungue dirisha at least nipate hewa. Lakini aha. Uh-huh. Then si like unajaribu kupumua eh, like una feel. Nafuta hewa ni kama hata yeah, nasikia kufanya mikono mimi ngize hewa. Suffocated. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Breathe, yeah. So kasumbuka vile hadi asubuhi. Kwa mka nilamka alfajiri nikatoka nje nyumbani nikaenda kwenye gate yetu nika nikasimama pale nikataka kupata ile hewa ya asubuhi ile ya nje na nikawa bado niko na maumivu nasikia kifua kinauma ile homa bado iko napiga chafia lakini nipo tu pale nikarudi tena kwa nyuma nikaketi sasa nisubiri ya mke nimwambie eh nipeleke hospitalini tupate ushauri zaidi na hospitali mlikwenda eh baadaye sasa lipoamka uh-huh. manaka lala kuchelewa aliponiombea uh-huh. nikalala ya lilala zaidi kuchelewa manaka lenda na maombi yeah mimi nilikuwa nasikia sina nguvu so nikalala So that's when I called a friend of mine one of our chairman anaitwa Max wa kanisa letu kamwambia eh ni nipe nambari za daktari ambaye unayejua mm. manake nasikia homa na vile nasikia kwa mwili sisiki vizuri yeah. akantumia haraka haraka nikachukua namba nambari za ile daktari nikampigia akaniambia Johnny hospitalini hapa Buruburu Metropolitan Hospital. Okay. Yeah. So umeenda tu ile normal check up kuangaliwa. Yeah, no check up. Where you feel kama it's going to be very extreme lakini hii ah, issue no. that yako yeah, poa. Eh nilijaribu tarudi masaa mawili matatu nitaangaliwa pale nipewe dawa zingine tureje this man of god has never been admitted ever in his life tangu tangu hajawahi kukuamsika hajawahi kuamgonjwa so hosim kaenda uko sawa mhm umeangaliwa walisema anything anilifika mwanzo e, tukapata tunaenda floor ya kwanza first floor mm-hmm. lakini pale lift kona akaniambia tupande tu lift mhm na kamwambia tupande lift yes akaniambia hapana tupande steps yeah. tupande stairs so nikaenda pale kwenye staircase uh, naturally okay you know when you are our size you <laughs> always use the stairs yeah, to yeah. try and uh, get rid of the calories and that's very key yes that is very key so, so that is why nilikuwa naonelea but was stairs yes, eh yeah, lakini like sasa ikani nikalemewa maana nilikuwa napanda hatua moja ama ngazi hiyo step moja nasimama kwanza na hema mm-hmm. kwa muda kidogo alafu nyingine sasa ukiwa ziko kama 20 nachukua muda mrefu sana lakini maana yake tushaanza itabidi nimalize. Uh-huh. So tukafika pale juu tukafika kwenye pale kituo cha nurses pale ya jina lako kaniandikisha pale mhm kasema tuchukue blood pressure wakaangalia vile uangalie utafiti wao wafanye wakabainisha kwamba sukari iko sawa e, pressure iko sawa ndio wakaniambia basi kuja ujilaze hapa kwenye kitanda hiki tukuweke kwenye oxygen maana naona uko na shida ya kupumua uh-huh yule nasa alipoweka ile oxygen akanivalisha nikamuita nikamwambia asante sana umenifanya jambo nzuri sana nasikia vizuri nasikia vizuri you Na felt like oh, relief this yes, one I one felt so nice and i told her thank you for giving me that oxygen what? it's okay you, you relax here wacha tujulisha daktari lakini tutatuma mtu aje afanye test ya covid lakini mimi najua sina covid najua nina homa mimi Ambia sawa wewe ulikuwa na homa kweli na kaandika zile dawa ulikuwa unatumia hata nilikuwa nimezibeba kwa karatasi kwa vaka ziona zile antibiotics ulikuwa unatumia kwa wiki ambayo ilikuwa ishaanza kabla nisikie maumivu yamezidi mm. so ule jamaa akaja akasema tuacha tufanye covid test ah fungua ulimi akaangalia kaingiza kitu pale kidude fulani ah kwa mapua pia kaingiza mm-hmm. katoa akasema kwa nusu saa ndakupa majibu yako mm-hmm. sababu saa vizuri mimi niko hapa nasikia vizuri na jibamba niko na oxygen nimewekwa kwa ndani na napumua yeah. wacha tusubiri mm-hmm. and you know the irony is at upon a, upon the doctor putting the ox, I mean the nurses putting the oxygen when they were checking the vitals it's when they realized the oxygen his oxygen level was at 72 yeah, i think so i think 70, 70, 72 72 yeah you getting mm-hmm. so that's why akipanda stairs Oh, anashindwa na hema mm. kwa sababu his oxygen level Iko, is iko chini, iko chini. Yeah. but you see we are just living normal of course we are just thinking ni homa and uh-huh. he's struggling uh-huh. so that's why immediately they put the oxygen we are kaskia relief because mwili yake na struggle yeah. so that's why he was very grateful about the oxygen i'm telling you but bado see we are just thinking it's just nini ya kawaida tutoke tuende yes. sisi home yeah. mm. so after that minutes wana come ya yes, wanakuja na matokeo wakasema e, daktari atakueleza maelezo zaidi wewe uta, utalazwa hospitalini utakupa nguo ndio uangalie <laughs> utibiwe na janiambia kama na covid ama na nini so ndio nikasubiri pale daktari akaja akaweka kwenye ward akasema wakamwambia niandikishe ile yani e, kwenye ile form ya, ya admission give all my particulars all my details 
nikatoka kwenye ward utajua ni covid after how long no 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 at, at that time when the nurses the, the doctor is the one who came and because you know the nurses and everyone has the nini mm. the result so the doctor came and told him now this is now the funniest thing see i'm standing next to him mm -hmm. The doctor comes, he's called Dr. Shibona. So Dr. Shibona comes and says, uh, Pastor, the result says that you have COVID. And then he looks at him and says, you are in a storm. Hi, hi. Hmm. He says that. So I was oh. like, I looked at him and I was like, hi, hi. Yeah, the doctor just looked at me and says, you're in a storm. And then he begins to explain about COVID. Now God, I'll go ask you a storm is... Coming. Coming. Confirmation. So Kaka. when the doctor just said you're in a storm and now he starts explaining to him and he says, you know, Pastor Boniface, that COVID is a storm, so it just takes you. And it can, it keeps taking you round and round and round and round. So we are just going to, to watch you day, one step at a time. Wakati ulisikia ukuna COVID, did it scare you? Did, you know? Well, not really. Uh, I, I, I still felt maybe it's mistaken. I need to do more tests. <laughs> I'll still come out of hospital like, maybe after two days or one day, even that day in the evening. So I didn't really think it would be that serious. Now you admit you for how long? For yeah. 17 days. Yeah, for 17 one. days? Yes. And did it get worse when you hospital? Yes. Uli? Oh. Eh, kupumwaka, ikaendelea kuwa na shida, nikaweka kwenye oxygen, eh, about five... Four days. Uh, no, three days. Three days consecutively, usiku na mchana. Yeah. So kulala ikakuwa ni shida, dawa ndio zile unazipata pia, antibiotics wana kupa, kule ikawa ni shida, sina appetite, sina hami ya chakula. Uko tu. Nimo tu, eh, mwili melegea, yeah. niko tu pale. Did you ever suspect maybe labda umekua infected pia? Now, thank you very much for reminding me that part. Uwe? <laughs> Sasa wakati daktari alimwambia akona COVID. You're in a storm, ukona COVID. Na kwa storm. Na I was the partner of the storm. I told myself, Kuisha Mimi, Sasa, Woi Jehovah. Immediately I spoke and I told Father, because you see, we have an eight month old baby who was sleeping in the same room with us. Yes. So now you can imagine if I've just been told that he has uh, COVID. COVID. Mm. And now during that time, it was now the Delta wave. Mm. And you see, the Delta wave, based on what we were watching on television, the way people in India were just mm -hmm. dropping like yeah. flies everywhere and yeah. just dying. Yeah. So it has been confirmed it is the Delta wave. Mm -hmm. And we are sick and I have a baby and me. Why? Immediately, the natural me, I started speaking in tongues. I, and I started speaking in tongues and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, me and the child, we can't. We refuse. And Ayani I just started speaking in tongues throughout and the, the doctor said, even you, Mama, you also have to test. I said, it's okay, I'll test. But I spoke in tongues. I kept speaking in tongues and I said, Father, in Jesus' name, this shall not be my portion. But at the same time, I'm praying for him. Mm -hmm. And so now, uh, of course, he's now admitted. Yeah. And uh, while he's being admitted, there is a place you can't cross. Uh -huh. Because now in the COVID ward, <inaudible> yes, he goes to that other side and you remain on this other side. And I think that is the most torturing part about COVID. Mm -hmm. Because your person and the person you love goes to the other side and you can't see them. And you can't talk to them. Their phone is taken away. You can't talk to them. You, can't you don't know how them. they are. Yes. Mm. So you rely on what the doctor will come and, and tell you. And the Holy you. Spirit. And the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And you see also this doctor, as you keep on calling, <sighs> you're not the only patient calling. So even this doctor has a life. <laughs> yeah. mm. So you, everyone, if everyone is calling this doctor. <laughs> yeah. And he has a life. Yeah. But I'm telling you, it is the most scary and the most lonely and anything else you can call it. So when he crosses over to the other side, it is waving like this. Now you kupimo, you tapat kanuko sawa. So ah, me, I went for the test, as I has told you in my tongue's life. I kept speaking in tongues and declaring the word of God. And for sure, I didn't have COVID. Amen. And I bless the Lord for that. That is God. And I continued uh, with my faith. But now you can imagine even after that, my head is thinking about him. Yes, of course. So I am still in prayer. So two after, th after th two days, mm -hmm. eh, I got a phone call. From the hospital? Yes, from the hospital. Let me tell you, those phone calls are the most scary phone calls ever. Wow. Eh, they are bad. So I got a phone call from the resident doctor and she tells me, I want you to come over to the hospital. Where? Hey. My friend, I tried to drive. Hey. I couldn't. 
my feet could not drive so there's a young man who comes to our church that was just along the he has a business along the the road that i was trying to drive mm -hmm. so i called him and i said please come Kuja. and drive me to the hospital yeah. Because I, you know, that phone call was scary. Because they said we have to move your husband to the ICU <laughs> because he's not responding. Responding to, to what? To the mm -hmm. medication. Treatment, yeah. To the treatment, so they must move him to the ICU. My friend, that was so scary. Of course, now he Jesus. comes, he helps me. So I get to the hospital. I'm even trying to walk, but I have to keep on believing God. So of course, I get there, and the doctor talks to me. And they tell me they have to move him to the ICU. Uh -huh. But I remember telling them, please don't talk to him. Don't tell him anything that is happening to him. Yeah. Anything, talk to me. Because I wanted his faith intact. Ah. Because you know, as you keep hearing, it, it, brings, it brings a lot of fear. Yeah. So I told them, if there's anything to say or to talk to me. Let up and they him, mm. let him, you just tell him he's his doing progress, well. he's doing well, he's on medication, whatever it is, but don't tell him. And I think that's a very, very good secret. And I really thank God for that. Because I imagine Mukishinda Apo, wanasema, hey, we're in Adawa. Hey, 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 mm. na and then you see now the problem is where I was, uh, you, you sit there after a while, because the Delta wave was bad for yeah, sure. Yeah. Where you are, you, you come, because you see where the ward is, the ICU is there, mm -hmm. and then there is the ward there, and then there is the HDU. Mm -hmm. So in case someone dies, you see them wheeling that person out. You see the other person being wheeled out. And mm -hmm. you see where you're standing, you're all trying to be strong, but you can see that person has gone, the other person has gone, like that, like that, you're getting. So it, it's scary. Now I'm going to you must hold on to Jesus. This is where now your word and your faith in God. So they told me that, and of course they took they, they, they took him to the ICU. Yeah. And uh, I said now, and you see the the doctors are very honest with you. Yeah. Because they kept telling me, Madam, uh, we are taking him to the ICU, but uh, it is it is all about him fighting. When you look at the person, they are saying yeah, fighting, yeah. because mm. up, upon admission, his uh, his lungs, the infection in the lungs was already seventy five percent. So by the time he's going to the ICU. It has even escalated to almost 90%. Iyo time unajielewa? Eh, uh -huh. unajielewa. Lakini sasa kubumuwa bado ni shida. Maki bado natumia oxygen. Uh, so ICU nilipoingia pale ilikuwa ngumu kiasi. Manake wale watu mbao wamelazwa kwenye ile ward wana changa moto zao. Na sasa ndiyo ni marangu ya kwanza. So, I'm thinking, these people who are in ICU, they are, they are really in a critical position. Mm -hmm. So, that means I'm also in a critical yeah. position. So, yeah. ni kama na wangale venya wanaka, to judge or gauge vile niko. Na ulijua mepelekwa ICU? Ya, yeah, nilijua. Nilijua, nilelezo, nika, nika pelekwa. Niki pelekwa. Were you shocked? Were you... U, I was ali? a bit afraid. I was a, I was a bit afraid just to wonder what's going to the, be the outcome and why I have to be in ICU. Because they also had to put me on a ventilator ili nisaidie kupumua sasa kupumua na mashini. Yeah. Maraka sasa the oxygen I was getting from oxygen tank uh, I I could nisaidia. Okay. Ni sasa niweko kwa mashini yeah. kwa siku kama mbili tatu yeah. ndio iweze kuniingiza ile hewa. And you were in ICU for how many days? There were 3 days 11. Yeah. No. Mm. Uh, the ICU itself was remember. about 4 days. 4 uh -huh. days, yes. And your entire stay in the hospital was was 17. The days. first time. Yeah, no, the very first time. The entire time. He was in and out of hospital uh -huh. for 90 days. For 90 days. For three months, yes. In yes. and out of yeah. hospital. Yeah. Yes. And you see, mtazamaji labda anaza kuwa na jiele, anafikiri ya kwamba, ati ya kwamba this time that when you were taken to the, to, you were taken to the ICU, yeah. ati that is the climax. Where? Mm. More Why? is coming. Ata tujaanza. Ata tujaanza. Ata ndivyo sasa tumeanza. Na vile ambavyo unaona ndege kwa runway. Au unaona speed unasema guy can anything I didn't know. Kumbe bado ita. Na. Allow us. You know next week God willing. Tutakuwa hapa hapa na part 2 of this wonderful testimony because mtazamaji kama unafikiria kwamba atakuwa ICU for those days sasa that was the climax you are very wrong kwa sababu kuna mahali itafika sasa ikuwe sasa hapa mambo vile yamefika like now the real storm sasa imefika mm. na you know situation ikaonekana sasa huyu ni wetu na Mungu mpaka kwingine anaamka anasema we ombeni kwa sababu kule ambako ni niko na ngenganiwa and then mm. he goes back to mm. you know that world yenye yeah. tutakuwa tunatueleza because 
Mungu alikurudisha. Nimesema hivyo ndio kwa nimesema. Si Mungu alikurudisha. Mimi I know the Lord gave me back my husband. Eti na maombi yaliombwa. Eh? people are praying we, we. kila mahali like do not underestimate the prayers ah, of hey, the church of Jesus hallelujah. Christ hallelujah yeah. yes. pastor Boniface Nagi na mkewe pastor Joyce Wangeshi from Nairobi Chapel Utawala wacha nikwambie stay kusema mambo mingi kwa sababu sana unajua uh, wakati mwingine presenters naweza kuambia vitu mingi hapa ambako upate nimekwambia hapa <laughs> tu yote next sunday god willing and i know he's willing najua kwamba atakuweka ataniweka na mwingine na hata mwenye unajua yuko hospitali na anaweza hata kama nikufuatilia makala haya kwenye simu yake mbc tv facebook page mwambie afanye hivyo kwa sababu next week utaweza kusikia vile ambavyo hali ilienda ikabadilika na sayo hiyo ajarudi nyumbani and then it's like everything is going back to normal wapi then all of a sudden pa Mambi akabadilika ka mate is my name